Hello, thanks for watching another webinar on how to start your own medical billing business with American Business Systems. Today, you're gonna to learn all about our award-winning cloud-based medical billing and electronic record system and why it can give you a huge advantage in the marketplace in trying to help doctors with their cash flow. Thanks for watching. Good afternoon, everybody. This is Eric with American Business Systems, and I want to welcome you here this afternoon. It is uh, Wednesday afternoon, 3 p.m., and uh, well, we're so glad to have you here this afternoon. We're going to be talking about our award-winning uh, billing and EMR system today. So hopefully this will be very helpful for you to uh, really learn about our system and maybe even how it compares to other systems today. So. Uh, hopefully you enjoy what you're uh, about to see here. We're going to go ahead and get started here, and I'm going to go ahead and get to the next slide. And again, welcome you. Again, my name is Eric Oje. I'm the Director of Research and Development here at American Business Systems. Been here just a little over six years, and uh, not even looking to even slow down as we kind of continue on with this trek in medical billing. Folks, if you've never been on our web, uh, a webinar before, we want to ensure that you can hear us. So as you can see on the screen, we're uh, pointing directly to that little hand there. So if you don't mind, click that little hand right there, and that will indicate back to me. And I see the hands already coming up, so hopefully you're hearing me already. It looks like we've got Ann and David, Jackie, uh, Samantha, Salah, good to have you, Judy, uh, Missy, Keith, good to have everyone here. We've got some more people actually showing up. When we get started here, we never know uh, just if everybody shows up at one time and they keep coming in through the webinar. So Again, uh, at least our voices are coming through. Now, also, we want to hear from you. You'll see down there in the, the same area where you are, uh, a place where you can actually type in some questions. So throughout the webinar, you will have questions. There's no doubt. We know that you will. So we want you to go ahead and get ready and type in your questions right down there where it says type in your questions. Now, throughout the presentation, Patrick and I will might stop. Uh, take those questions or at towards the end. We actually have a slide there for uh, Q&A So you can always know that your question will be answered even, even if we don't get to it today I promise you we'll get to it. So for those again who have this is your first time on our webinar I want to kind of go through about who we are here at American Business Systems. Well What we have here and what we've been able to do for quite some time here and as you'll see here uh, we have several different solutions to helping doctors get their medical billing done properly. And that's what we've been able to do for the last 20 years, mainly helping folks like yourself do like these people here on the screen. Some of these people are, are actually some of our licensees who uh, have already come through training and have uh, done very well, but really what our focus is to help you be able to have a lifestyle that you want to, and that is to possibly even be able to work from home. We have licensees throughout the, the, the U.S., as you can see here. We've got licensees in just every state uh, uh, in the United States, in Oklahoma, Florida, California, Arizona. They're all over the place, but doesn't mean that there's not room for you because there is certainly room for everyone because just the amount of doctors that there are, there's no way we can even keep up with uh, supplying uh, medical billing companies out there uh, to help those doctors. What we're going to talk about today is what you see on the screen is our web-based uh, billing and EMR system. Now we're going to get into a lot more detail about it, but this is what separates you and American Business Systems from everybody else. We get a lot of questions asked, how am I going to compete out there in that marketplace? Hopefully today we're going to be able to answer that question for you. Again, for those who have never been to our website, we want to kind of help navigate you through right now on where you need to go. Go to uh, uh, absystems.com. You'll find us there on the web. You'll find out more about us, as you can see right along the top there, the business package, the income potential, the news. There's blogs. We've got videos. There's just a tremendous amount uh, of uh, information out there about us just on our website. But again, if you want to get into a deeper, more bigger due diligence, you're going to want to get on one of these orange buttons here. Click on one of those, and that will help us to know you want to go further, which is going to be into our virtual brochure. Now, there we have different, several different sections. Some of you have already been through it, 
uh, like the welcome section, the opportunity, getting clients, training, support, and in the, each of those sections, there are subsections there that you can read about, watch videos, and even be able to contact some of our licensees who are just ready to talk with you because they've been right where you are. So don't uh, hesitate in giving those folks a call. Again, for those that want to know about our Better Business Bureau rating, we still have an A-plus rating. You can go check us out there on the BBB uh, for the Tarrant County, Johnson County uh, area, and just feel free to go out there and, and look us up there. We've actually had several people in the last few months and weeks take advantage of coming by and visiting with us here at 5751 Kroger Drive here in Keller. Now, Keller is a community just north of Fort Worth. Uh, you would, if for those that want to fly in, you fly into the Dallas-Fort Worth area airport. We'll make some arrangements to pick you up and bring you out to our building, and uh, you can visit with us. Again, our upcoming training is just a few weeks away. It's May the 19th through the 23rd. And just as a quick reminder, there will not be another training until July. And the reason why is because we do this every six weeks. And that week that would have fallen on July the 4th, we're not going to be having a, uh, a, a training week that week. So we're actually going to have it after that particular weekend. So there's actually one additional week between this training and the next one. So it looks like we've actually skipped a month. So be prepared. Come on board with us. If you're looking to get in, involved with us, this is our next upcoming training that we have going on here, May 19th through the 23rd. Let me introduce you to Patrick Phillips. If you've never heard about Patrick Phillips, he is our founder and CEO of American Business Systems. He is an author and a co-author of several books. The one on the left is How to Reprogram Yourself for Success. The one on the right is The Cash Crunch to Cash Flow, which is actually a marketing tool for you to go out there and talk to the doctors about how you can actually find more money just simply by using our system. Again, as we'll kind of show you throughout the day. So let's bring Patrick on. on. Patrick, it's good to have you here this afternoon. And folks, yes, we are live. You can see our videos right here for those that are watching us live today. So Patrick, welcome here to this, this afternoon. Hey, you know, those pictures of us there look actually better than the videos. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> hey, this is an exciting uh, webinar that uh, Eric has kind of designed for us today because, uh, you know, we talk about the fact that in medical billing, you have to have several different things that all mesh together. We're going to kind of put that together for you today and help you to see that a part of uh, doing uh, this business and being successful in it is having a great billing system itself. And people ask us questions about it. So we thought we'd just uh, show you some behind the scenes uh, pictures of what the system actually looks like. Yeah. And Patrick, last week, if we remember, we talked really about the value that uh, an ABS licensee actually brings and takes to the doctor. We talked about all the different things, and one of the questions that actually came out there is, what about our system, and how does it compete, and how does it compare? Uh, and so that's that's the kind of the track we're going to be going on. And so really, it kind of birthed out of, you know, what value do we give our licensees? And it's really our system that does that. But really, before we get into that, I wanted to kind of take us on a little journey here about the evolution of medical billing. So, uh, you know, listen, you and Linda were some of the first ones to uh, carve out this niche out there of medical billing. You want to kind of talk about that as we get started? Yeah, I tell people back in 1987, uh, my wife started doing medical billing for a friend of ours who was in the durable medical equipment uh, business. Uh, he actually rented out hospital beds and oxygen and things like that and billed Medicare. So he said, Linda, do you know how to do medical billing? She said, well, no, I've never even seen a medical bill. I don't know what you're talking about. So he brought her into the office and within two or three days, Eric, she was doing the billing for him. She had taken it over completely. So, you know, the, the technical aspects of doing medical billing is not near as hard as people think it is. If you, if you go out on the internet, you think this is a difficult business because you see all these training courses on medical billing and coding, especially the coding part, right? That scares people because right. they know there's thousands of codes that have to do with the diagnosis of the problem and then the procedure that the doctor you know, uses on the patient to get them well. You don't need to know all that. And we, we didn't know any of that at all. In fact, as you're illustrating there, it's funny you came up with that picture of that old typewriter. We didn't have one quite that old, but we did use a, a manual type, uh, typewriter, electric typewriter to 
to actually create those uh, bills for the doctor. Well, let, let, let's just start there. I, I guess at one point you have a little doctor there as we're seeing through here. He'll, he'll be our illustrator for the for the, the this afternoon. But basically, you were talking about the codes, Patrick, and really the codes generate really from the doctor, and they come from what we're showing here, which is called the super bill. You want to kind of explain what the super bill does and all the, the parts of the, about this? Yeah, this is just a form that uh, it looks different for all doctors. There's nothing standard about it. They come up with it on their own, basically, and create a form that has the most common codes and procedures and diagnostic uh, codes that they use when they see their patients. You know, probably 90% of all the codes that this particular doctor uses is on that form. So you've seen this before. They check it off or they circle these numbers, and at the end, that's how they determine how to bill the insurance company or, or you. And yeah, so it's a, it's a physical form that's, uh, you know, a piece of paper that they still work yeah, with got, most of the time. It's got the patient's name on it. It's got really who their insurance company is. So in the transition, how did you and Linda actually get this information to you? I mean, again, <laughs> that was back in the Stone Age. I know the world was black and yeah, white. Yeah, that was way back there. Like what my grandkids say. Uh, Poppy, did you live in the black and white days? Yes, exactly. it was 1987, uh, and we would literally go by the office. We had them put it in a big envelope and just set it up on the counter there for us. We'd come by on Fridays and pick that envelope up, and that had all these super bills in it. Then we'd bring it back to our office and uh, literally uh, type it up on the typewriter there uh, in, in what's called a... A 1500 form that's just the standard number that the government gave this form but as you can see it's just a it's an insurance claim form so it's a standardized form the government came up with all insurance companies use it all Medicare Medicaid and as long as you can fill out that one page form right there that's a medical bill yeah because basically what's on there is the patient's name are they with Medicare you know are they with TRICARE are they with uh, Aetna whatever it might be Right. And I guess you and Linda would just, I guess Linda, the first part, she would just literally put this in a typewriter and type it up. Yeah, she'd be looking uh -huh. at that super bill, and she would see what the doctor had on that. Then she would put this form in and literally type it. It was a multi-part form, and so she would put right. it in there and type it up. Yeah. Right. If you made it a mistake, can't... by the way, you had to peel it back and use the whiteout, you know, on each one of the copies. It was uh, pretty hilarious <laughs> when you think back on it. Young people well, probably okay. don't even know what I'm talking about when I say whiteout. But that's yeah, a little uh, liquid yeah, that's white stuff. Liquid, yeah, the liquid paper. That's what yeah, they, liquid paper, yeah. Yeah, that's what they do. Okay, so time went on a little bit, and so the the days of liquid paper kind of went by the wayside because <laughs> you got a computer. Hey, wow, we just we moved up in the world, didn't we? Uh, yeah, I remember Adam. Uh, I mean, uh, Eric, the very first one that I was using was an old Apple IIe. I worked oh, for Apple back in the early '80s, and so. I had an Apple computer and I designed a little uh, little database form that basically you filled in the forms on the screen like you see there. And then at the end of the day, you'd push a button and it would print all these, uh, you know, HIPAA 1500 forms out on a dot matrix printer. Remember the old dot matrix printer with the little holes exactly. along the edge and it would pull the paper through. And, and then we'd have a whole stack of those that we'd tear apart and we literally folded those up and stick them in an envelope and mailed them off to the insurance companies hoping that the postal service got them delivered. So really, from the age of the typewriter to the age of the computer, basically, you kind of did away with liquid paper. One because step. You, <laughs> yeah, you, you didn't have to. You know, if you made a mistake, you could correct it on the computer screen and not have to use the liquid paper. That's right. Yeah, but there, so there wasn't much advance there if you think about it. No. Right, because you, you were basically doing the same thing. It just, like you say, went to the, 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 the printer portion. But, but let, me, let me emphasize how easy this was. As you can see, we're not making anything up. We're not having to look up anything. We just took what was on that super bill there on the left and put the codes in that the doctor had given us. We we didn't have to be coders. We didn't have to know anything about those codes because if, if it wasn't right, it was the doctor's fault. It wasn't our fault. Exactly. Yeah. And so it, that's, that's uh, really nothing's basically changed in, in, in that, that particular field. So, again, then you – then. Again, again, I guess software started to develop, and you went from basically some database that you created, and then I guess someone started really starting to work on uh, a piece of software, and, and I kind of blew this one up a little bit more because this one kind of gives a little bit better look at it, but now we're actually dealing with 
patient demographics inside of it, but still there's the printing of this form. Well, and, and, it, and all that data, as you're illustrating there, resided on the hard disk, the physical hard disk there on my computer sitting there in our home because we ran the business out of our home, uh, never did open an office. Uh, and, right. and so uh, the dangerous part about that nowadays is if you've got software that resides on your computer, you've opened yourself up to all kinds of regulations and rules that you're breaking probably with uh, the HIPAA, they call it HIPAA rules. Uh, that's the Health Insurance and uh, Portability Act of 1996, where they said, look, you got to protect this patient data. Well, on the hard drive, if, if somebody came in and stole my computer, they had all that patient data right there. Right. So right. we so, kind of evolved from there into, uh, you know, uh, we did find some software that was out there that was online. You know, I mean, it wasn't online. It still resided on our computer, but we could push a button and all the data went electronically through the Internet. You know, you'd hear the old modem dial up, <laughs> connect, and you would send the file once a day. You know, all your batch, the batch of files would be uploaded to, uh, you know, the clearinghouse. Right. So that's really where you, I love the, the sound effect was awesome. <laughs> Thank you. I'll I'll work on that. <laughs> that, was the, that was the best sound effect for a modem <laughs> I've heard in a long time. You remember but that. Still the doctor, the, yeah, the, the, I do remember that. But the doctor still filled out a super bill uh, and then still got you the information. But now you're talking about instead of it just being printed out, now it's going to this thing called the clearinghouse. So yeah. talk to us. Now this is really kind of moving from typewriter day to, you know, slapping those keys on there yeah. to the dot matrix printer to that you still had to mail it. You, you just moved into a new world here about the clearinghouse. So why don't you talk briefly, because a lot of people don't know what a clearinghouse is, Patrick. Yeah, clearinghouses uh, started back in the 90s, and they basically were independent companies that set up and said, look, all this data that's coming across the internet is coming in in different formats through different software. And then all the insurance companies want to receive that data in a little different format. So we'll be the in-between person who formats that correctly so that each one of those insurance companies get it the way they want it. And while we're doing that, by the way, we're going to scrub the claim clean, that is check for errors electronically and see if everything is filled in where it needs to be and are there enough digits in the social security number or the telephone number or whatever, and, and reject the claim. So the problem was that it would go to the clearinghouse, uh, we'd upload that one day, and then maybe two days later, we would see within our software on our computer a report that came back from the clearinghouse to us that said, okay, we accepted these claims, but here's the ones we rejected. And the problem was they didn't tell you a lot of times even why they rejected it. So we had right. to figure I that mean, out. You, you, you guys had to really go figure that out. So, again, as time progressed and the evolution of medical billing has occurred, the government really started popping in here and says, look, Doc, stop filling out that form. Let's, let's start driving you to a paperless format. So now comes this electronic medical record. So now... I, at this point, I think all of us have gotten to the point where we've gone to the doctor now and we've actually seen the doctor type on a computer, usually in their office. And usually the way I've seen it is that the doctor may be talking with me and then all of a sudden they turn away and they start typing out on this electronic medical record. So kind yes. of bring us up to where we are at that point. Well, basically what's happening there is the doctor is actually inputting on his computer there but then that also has to be sent somewhere. And so now with a medical biller that they're uh, you know, working with, that data has to be uploaded and downloaded. And sometimes there's a third piece of software between the doctor's computer and the medical biller's computer. So it's right. still kind of crude if you think about it because you're uploading and downloading and the data is never in real time. Right. But it still goes through the same processes as we've seen earlier, as you mentioned. It still has to go through a clearinghouse then in turn, it still goes through the insurance companies and then eventually back to the doctor. Now, Patrick, you and I met with a, a, a gentleman yesterday who's in uh, the, the medical field. He's actually a, uh, I think he was in a surgical, surgical assistant. assistant. And we, we, you and I were talking to him yesterday about how long it actually takes a doctor, once they see a patient, to actually the time that they get paid. You, you remember how long it took? He he said yesterday. Was it forty-five days? He said sixty. Sixty days. 
Yeah. 60 days. So, so the, from the time that he does a surgery to the time that he gets paid is 60 days. And, and Eric, he was outsourcing to a billing company. So obviously his billing company doesn't have a web-based, cloud-based, real-time system. Or it right. would have been paid a whole lot quicker. Ours averages about two weeks, not 60 days. Well, and that's because we truly have a seamless integration. So what we've been able to do, and this is what's making, we talked about this as an award-winning practice software. It's the combination of what we have here with iClaim, with EMRX, and now with our clearinghouse. So Patrick, if you can imagine, and if those that are on the call today, what we've been able to do is take all those pieces of the super bill, to the billing software, now to the clearinghouse, and have brought it all together. So let's kind of illustrate now the way that it looks today. Yeah, but the cool part is that now, uh, since our software was actually originally designed to fit the Apple iPad, even before the iPad came out, we were designing it for that. Uh, we basically designed it for an iPhone and then just changed the dimensions of the screen when the iPad finally came out. But the neat thing is the doctor can actually use an iPad literally holding that in front of him as he talks to the patient, uh, tapping a few buttons there and putting all of his data in for that visit right on the iPad, which then goes immediately into our iCloud, uh, iCloud billing system. So you, as the medical biller uh, working out of your home, uh, at first at least, you're actually uh, getting that data electronically right into the system in real time. And since we have the clearinghouse now that's a part of our system, not a third-party entity, that data goes directly to the clearing uh, uh, through our clearinghouse to the insurance companies. Perfect. Uh, I mean, the rejection rate is so low, Eric, it's, it's compared to uh, what is about 30% or more for the average system out there. Ours is less than 2% rejection rate. So that's it's because it's all integrated. Right. And so instead of all of those different steps, I mean, if we can just kind of imagine going back to what we were talking about here. Uh, first of all, we had a doctor fill out a piece of paper, then getting that to you as the medical billing company early on, taking it, typing it out, mailing it off. Then it evolved again a little bit more, a little bit more. And so we really need to stress, Patrick, the importance now that our clearinghouse is what's part, and really is that, that's the part that, it, it almost bridges from the time that the doctor is seeing the patient, now to actually getting that, that information to the insurance companies just to get paid. Now you were talking with one of our licensees recently about how quickly she's getting some of her doctors paid. Yeah, we had one licensee who said, this the particular one said, Patrick, I, I didn't even believe it myself, and the doctor certainly didn't, because on Monday, uh, he had put the information in on the EHR. It went into our billing system. We, we processed it the same day. And the doctor had the payment from that insurance company in his bank account on Friday of the same week. That's, that's incredible. You tell that to most doctors and they'll call you a liar. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but but Eric, to, no, go ahead. Uh, well, well, it's because if you think about it, it's kind of like having a, you know, most people have a, a PC. It's made by Dell. The operating system, though, is made by Microsoft, a, a separate company. Now, if there's a problem, uh, they blame one another. Oh, that's a Microsoft's problem. You have to call Microsoft. No, no, that's Dell's problem. You need to call That's a hardware problem. Well, that's the same way that insurance companies and medical billing software companies deal with it when they have a third-party clearinghouse. They blame it on the clearinghouse. With us, there's nobody to blame. The buck stops here. If that claim doesn't go through and it's not clean and it's not accepted, it's our system's fault. We don't have anybody else to turn to. So that's why we make sure behind the scenes that those claims get paid. And that's why I'm showing this back on the screen. I mean, because everything is is truly right there. It's, it's the I claim, everything, it, it's all built in. So there's nothing really that we can blame than really ourselves. Uh, so let's talk about, yeah. you know. Eric, let's it's, just... it's, the, it's the only, really, it, it's the only system out there that has the clearinghouse built in and the EHR, as well as the billing, all integrated and uh, owned by the same company and uh, the same programmers work on it. It's not pieced together. 
There are right. software packages out there, Eric, and you know who I'm talking about. Uh, right. One company says, oh, yeah, we've got EHR. No, what they did is they just partnered with some third-party EHR and tie it into their system. Uh, that's completely different from having it completely, truly integrated like ours is. That, that's correct. So, again, we, I think well, hopefully we have trans, you know, uh, gotten the information to those that are on the call today, those that will be listening. Here is your biggest key with us and with being a part of ABS. Because, Patrick, so many people ask of us uh, regularly, how am I going to go out there and compete with the big guys? Right. This is your advantage. And, and, and I know that a lot of people want to talk about cost, and you and I kind of discussed that a little bit earlier on about how we'll talk about that. Now, let's just maybe deal with that towards the end. But this is exactly what you need to go out there and compete out in the market. Well, and let me just throw this in. You brought up costs because everybody's always wondering, well, once I've paid your license fee, what other costs am I going to have? Well, there's no other costs for you. Uh, remember, when you sign up a doctor, all of the costs of using our system are covered by the doctor, not you. And so you have a one-time lifetime licensing fee with ABS. We give you all the training and support and materials and systems to make a great living working from your home. And you never pay us another dime ever. The way we've built the business is that we make a few pennies on each one of the transactions that go through our system. But remember the doctor's covering those costs, not you. Exactly. So thanks, thanks for taking a little bit of time and explaining that. And folks, we'll certainly go over that a lot more in detail with you. Uh, so just get with us after the webinar. We'll, we'll be happy to answer some of those questions. Well, let's first talk about just the billing piece. Now, certainly, Patrick, we're, we're coming down to the bottom of the hour. And, you know, we're not going to certainly be able to get into it, all the details about iClaim right now. But I wanted to bring out probably the biggest area uh, of what makes this really an award-winning type of software. And it really is because of our clearinghouse. That actually gives us the portal to do certain things. Now, Patrick, I think you and I did a webinar not too long ago about how many claims get rejected just simply because the information about the patient, whether it's the patient's name, address, their phone number, if that doesn't get entered into a billing system correctly, Tell, tell us what happens with that when it gets to the insurance company. Well, the insurance company looks at that data and says, now there's no way that we're going to pay this claim because it has got incorrect or missing data in it. So that immediately gets rejected. And again, if you're doing it through most software systems, what's going to happen is it'll be two, two, day, two or three days later before you actually even know that it was rejected. Sometimes they tell you why it was rejected and sometimes they don't. In ours... First of all, it won't even be processed if not if, if everything's not there, uh, the actual data. If it's incorrect in any way, though, we notify you in real time. It's almost instantaneous that the biller knows exactly what's wrong. So as you're illustrating there, Eric, uh, with these screenshots of the system, uh, everything is totally in real time. Uh, how can we define real time? I guess this is real time. If you're Unless you're watching the recording of this, folks, you're watching me and Eric here in real time on April the 23rd at uh, 3.28 uh, p.m. That's real right. time. So the data that's flowing through, in, uh, through this go-to webinar system that we're using is in real time. Our data is in real time with the clearinghouse and with all of the uh, insurance companies. So you never have to worry about it being outdated or having to wait for it. The yeah, doctors the love th that, too. And absolutely. And one of the things we're going to get here towards the end, we're actually going to do a comparison with some of the more well-known named systems that are out there. One of the things that you and I were looking into today before the webinar, we were talking about some what's called critical quality measurements. And right. one of those is this whole issue about eligibility. Now, a lot of times, Patrick, we know that there are other billing systems out there but they have to go outside of that system to check insurance eligibility. And, el and insurance eligibility is nothing more than through a system going and making sure that the insurance that that patient has is, is up to date, it's current, and it's active. Right. So the difference between ours, 
again, because we own our own clearinghouse, we can actually do this eligibility request directly in our system, never have to leave our system. So I'm going to illustrate that here real quickly. So I've just clicked on the eligibility request. That's going to take us to this page inside of our system. Well, as you'll see here, I'm pointing to what you have to do. Point to the payer. So the payer would be whatever the insurance that that patient might have. In this instance, it's going to be Aetna. So the, they would use Aetna and then come right down here where it says subscriber ID. And that's on that card. I mean, everybody that has insurance, they have either a group name or a group ID or some type of subscriber ID. And at that point, within our system, just click up the look up. And what happens as quickly as we just flip the screen here, uh, this information comes back from, like Aetna, or as we show, we're showing right here, United Healthcare. Now, again, we're using uh, fake data because we can't uh, use real people's names here or real IDs yeah, or anything yeah. else because of the HIPAA rules. The, hi but, the, HIPAA, the HIPAA police would come after us. <laughs> exactly. So what do we see here on the screen? First of all, without typing in the, the patient's name, it actually came up with the patient's name, Patrick. Then if you see right next to it, it shows that this patient is active with that particular insurance. Now that's important because if, uh, let me back up. The way this is done in most doctor's offices, Eric, is, is what's amazing. When people first see that, they go, oh yeah, well, I, I would assume that that's how everybody does it. No, you right. will see people in a doctor's office sitting on the phone for sometimes 20 minutes waiting right for the insurance company to verify that that patient's insurance is valid, active. And in ours, it is done as quickly as you saw one screen move to the next. Literally in seconds, that is telling you that that, that patient will be pay, that will pay that claim because that, that's an active patient. Now that's important because doctors see patients all the time where the front office staff did not verify and they go ahead and see the patient and then when they get through, and try to bill the insurance company, they go, well, no, that, they're not even valid. They haven't made their payments or they changed policies or whatever. Exactly. So. I think everybody on the call today and those that will be listening all recognize this. You go to the doctor, the first thing they ask you for is your driver's license and insurance card. Right. And what do they do with it? They take it, they put it on a copy machine, and they make a copy. That copy goes in the, in the patient's file, and it usually doesn't get looked at again until it hits – Possibly that doctor's biller or their outside uh, billing company. Right. Whereas ours, if, if we can really make the transition here, folks, this is being done proactively before the patient's ever seen instantaneously like this. Then, as you can see here, there's a button right there where it says create chart. Now, also, you can see right below that before I move from here, it's also showing the doctor which copay that they actually need to input in their system. But again, Patrick, just as quickly as I click on this button and we create the chart, it actually creates a chart right inside of iClaim. It brings in the patient's name, address, phone number, all of that information, including all the information about the insurance uh, company as well. Their address, their phone number, their routing numbers, all of that. So explain how that helps eliminate errors whenever people that have to actually type that in. in well, in well you, you basically just said it. We, we eliminate the, the human error that's there, the, the possibility that they're copying something off of a, uh, an insurance card wrong or uh, the, the patient has filled out a form and they can't read the writing. All of that's eliminated because this data comes directly from the insurance company. We know it's accurate because they have the most accurate information about that patient. Exactly. So first of all, hopefully everybody can see so far that this is a critical issue and the way that we help do these demos, I know we're going to talk about that a little bit later, this is one of the, the benefits that you as an ABS licensee gets from us. We're actually demonstrating this to the doctors to show them that you as a medical billing company is on the front edge of technology and on the front edge of collecting their money. Patrick. It, I cannot tell you how many doctors that I've actually done a demo for saying, you mean I can actually find out before I see this patient whether I'm going to get paid or not? I, I know. I mean, that's you've told me that that's what we hear as we're doing the demos for people, you and other uh, people that are you know associated with us. When the demos are done, the doctors are just going, wow, 
through the whole thing. They can hardly believe it because it's leading that technology that should be out there with everybody, but it's not. As you'll see from the charts that Eric has prepared here, comparing us to uh, some of the other systems that are out there. So, that, hey, that Eric, I'm bill. sorry, let me just say this. I do see some questions yeah. coming in, which is good. You guys should be okay. typing in your questions as you think of them. Uh, we'll address all of those here towards the end. Great. So, again, yeah, I'm glad. Thanks for reminding us because maybe we just got everybody mesmerized on. We got some questions coming in, but we can certainly get some more in as you want to go through it. Now, yeah. let's talk about the EMR. Well, Again, let's make sure that everybody understands what EMR stands for. It's electronic medical records. Uh, our privately labeled one for our licensees is called EMRX. And uh, so we're going to kind of step through a little bit about this information. Uh, and then again, all we're doing is highlighting just ever so, we're just scratching the surface, basically. There's so much that can be done with our EMR uh, service. One of the things, Patrick, is that it's, you know, it doesn't matter what platform it's on. Uh, again, why don't you go ahead and talk about that? Uh, yes. Oh, the platform that it's on, of course, is uh, anything that's out there that's connected to the Internet, basically. It could be a PC, a Macintosh computer, Apple computers, uh, the iPad, a tablet. Uh, I mean, literally, Eric, the, the, the doctor can see what he wants to uh, look at on, on the, the iPhone. The iPhone actually right. has all of the information because it has a browser built into it, uh, and you just go to the web. Uh, log in, and there it all is. Now, it's kind of hard to see on a, an iPhone, but the point is that it was designed, as you can see from these screenshots here, for the iPad because the doctors love this little device. It's very lightweight. They can hold it in one hand. They can tap with fingers. You see how the, the buttons on it are big buttons. They're made for adult fingers to be able to touch these things while they're standing there talking to the patient. Eric, I had a guy that I visited a couple of months ago in the doctor's office. He literally never made eye contact with me. He sat with his back towards me, sitting at his laptop, facing right. the wall. Uh, you know, right. so uh, this is just the doctors absolutely love this for interspacing with the patients. And it's in real time. It's over the Internet, available 24 seven. If the doctor wants to see reports on where his money is, he can see all of that from any device. If he's on a cruise, he can go to the computer room and log in and see his actual real-time status. Yeah, and, and, and another good benefit is that if the doctor's out of town and he does have an emergency case and, uh, you know, nothing has to be faxed to him or sent to him, the, the doctor simply logs in to wherever they are and can yeah. be able to pull up a uh, patient's medical record right there. Uh, one of the nice things about all this, and again, when we show these demos to you as a uh, potential licensee, Certainly, we kind of go through this a little quickly, but just to kind of, again, highlight one of the areas, I, Patrick, you kind of touched on this when we first started the webinar today, about the codes, the, these diagnosis codes or diagnostic codes, whatever we want to call them. Uh, basically, it's a code, as you can see here on the screen, you know, when we type in the word fracture, it's going to give us all the codes that have to deal with fractures. Right. So, uh Again, the system actually charts for the doctor. Now, uh, without getting into a lot of technical uh, portion of the EMRX portion of it, just imagine as the nurse is asking you, Patrick, you know, why did you come in today? And you say, hey, I came in maybe because I maybe fractured my foot. The doctor looks at it. He puts in his notes there or her notes in there. And all of a sudden, when they get to this portion of the screen, the screen is telling the doctor what the, the diagnosis code is in the first place. Yeah, because as you can see uh, in this example, this is just a screenshot. Now, folks, we, we can't still show this live during a webinar because you got too much data uploading and downloading. And it would be very, uh, uh, it wouldn't work. So we have to use screenshots. But in real time, uh, you would tap in the word fracture, for example, uh, and push a button, and all of a sudden, look, there's two, four, six, eight codes that have shown up there with the word fracture in it that the doctor can just tap one of those and select the one that fits. Exactly. And if anybody's on the call today or listening uh, later on, uh, I know that this whole deal about, we can see that there's an ICD-9 search and an ICD-10 search. Talk, you want to talk about the difference between those real quickly and what's the, changed the, here? Yeah, the ICD is the International Classification of Diseases. And that comes from 
uh, the World Health Organization who came up with these codes so that we didn't have to remember the exact wording. We just used a number. That way everybody goes, oh, that's an 8054. That's better than saying that's a compression of fracture of the lumbar. So right. they're just numbers. And there's thousands of them because there's lots of things that could be wrong with the human body, right? But guys, those come out on a regular basis. ICD-9 is the current set of codes. That's just a version number nine, all right? Uh, now, there's another one coming out next year. Uh, by October of next year, doctors have to switch over to this new system called ICD-10. And that has what, uh, Eric, uh, 16 times as many codes. Yeah, it's, it's a lot more. But the reason we're showing that to you right now is um, because this is one of the things that made the EMRX an award-winning EMR, simply because we were prepared uh, because, again, for those that people might know this, uh, the deadline was actually October 1st of this year. But because there were a lot of EMR systems that are on the market, and some will even show you this afternoon, that weren't ready for ICD-10, Congress and the President and everybody pushed it back. Right. So, so the doctors got a reprieve of another year, basically. But Which exactly. is good for us because our licensees love the fact that now they have another year to be marketing the fact that the doctors need to be ready. Well, we are already ready, guys. All the ICD-10 codes are already in our system. Exactly. So let's take maybe the next five or ten minutes, Patrick, and we're going to kind of go through some comparisons with the way we are compared with other EMRs. And again, now, I love these I charts uh, that you've kind of designed here for the webinar, Eric, because this, this basically says that our system – Compared to others, we're going to show you in the right-hand column that you see blank there, some other systems. But first, we wanted to talk about what the things are that we're going to be comparing. Uh, let's start right. with certifications, Eric. Yeah, we're going to be talking about who, who we're certified by. And there's you'll see this word CCHIT. You'll see the Drummond Group. And you'll see some that are called Sure Scripts. Um, you'll see where we are and how we're compared and, and what certifications we actually hold. Those, those are just also, organizations, by the way, who independently rate different software systems and say whether or not they are ready for uh, the electronic medical records uh, you know, movement. Right. And then the stage two meaningful use ready by 2014. That's pretty critical, too, because that has to deal with Medicare and the reimbursements that the doctors can actually get back. Uh, Patrick, you want to talk a little bit about meaningful use and their and what they can uh, they can get back cash wise? The doctors can. Yeah, the government came up with some stimulus money, basically for doctors to encourage them to move towards electronic medical record systems, uh, because doctors are hesitant to, to change anything inside their practice. So they said, look, if you can get ready and start meaningfully using a EMR system, we're going to give you some money back and. Uh, Gosh, it started at 44000 I think by this year right. it's, it's down a little bit to 24000 or something. But it's still a chunk of money that doctors have, could have. Well, ours, right. as you're going to see, is one of the few that were ready in January of this year for, for stage two, uh, stage which is, two. you know, after stage one, meaning it's right. uh, <laughs> got another uh, certification level. And then we kind of talked real briefly about critical uh, quality measures. Clinical. And you want to kind of take a little bit about talk a little bit more about this here. Yeah. We brought this up about in where what we're talking about, the clinical quality measures. And so, Patrick, why don't you briefly discuss this and, and why this is important to what is cms.gov, which is Center of Medicare and Medicaid Services on the government website. Yeah, the government just came up with some uh, guidelines that say, look, if you're going to use an electronic medical record system, it needs to be uh, – some things that, that make it really, really useful to keeping track of the patient and making sure that they get well. Uh, some of the things that you see listed there, it's kind of hard to read, but there's uh, health outcomes, the clinical procedures that are used, uh, the patient safety, efficient use of the healthcare resources, uh, care coordination, and all the other things that have to do with whether or not a doctor is tracking accurately what's wrong with the patient and how they're helping them to get well. If it qualifies for that, there's a whole bunch of measures that are out there. You're going to see us compared to other systems that are out there that are not nearly ready as ours is. Exactly. All right, so moving on here, uh, the, the next section where we're going to be talking about is, again, here's the ICD-ready software as of February 2014. We're going to compare 
again, some very well-known uh, EMR systems out there compared to who was ready and who was not ready. Yeah, for those of you watching that have done some due diligence, I know some of you are probably on this webinar for the first time, so this may be a little deep for you, but for those of you who are trying to educate you on the fact that if you've done your due diligence, you know there's lots of systems that are out there that are used for medical billing. Uh, so what we've done with this chart and we're about to show you is compare us with about 10 or 12 other big system names out there. And you're going to be amazed at how leading edge we are compared to the other people that are out there. Because again, what is it that gives you the advantage in the marketplace? Well, one of them is the system that you're using and that the doctor will be using. Uh, Multi-year SureScript. This, this has to do with e-prescribing. Again, a lot of doctors still ask if we e-prescribe and a lot of those that that want to know about that. Uh, you've already talked about this very uh, heavily already about the native to the iPad. Again, we're 100% functional. Uh, achieve care coordination pre-validation. Now, that says a lot, but what it basically is is that I think we all remember the HMOs back in the 80s. What they're trying to do now, Patrick, is uh, repackage that into what's called patient-centered medical home. Basically, it's just a new name for the HMOs. It's, a, it's an advanced care coordination between the patient and the doctor. We're already pre-validated for that in our EHR side of everything. And as you'll see, many of the systems that are out there are not. Yeah. And then we've been in the cloud for at least 10 years. And then the last one we've already kind of mentioned as well is uh, our system assists the doctors in charting those diagnostic codes. Many so of us. Many of my staff members say that uh, my head has been in the clouds for years. So <laughs> <laughs> our system has been in the cloud too, meaning guys, again, in the cloud means it's out on the internet. It's, it's stored on servers that are on our, you know, protected, heavily encrypted servers. So you don't have to worry about the data being lost or backed up or stolen. That's all protected. Just as safe as if, if, if any of you do online banking, believe me, that data is pretty safe. Ours is just as safe. Exactly. Before we get to those, talk about medical economics and, and where we found these, these, these vendors here. Yeah, medical economics, you can go to medicaleconomics.com and you'll see that they do a lot of surveys and research on all the things that have to do with healthcare, including, of course, comparing systems. So according to their research, these, this chart and these charts that you're about to see uh, came from medical economics, and you can verify that we, compared to some of the top vendors that are out there, are really ahead of the game. Well, here's the first one. Some of you have probably heard of Advanced MD. They're owned by ADP, uh, which is a big corporation, a multi-billion dollar corporation. They do payroll for a lot of, of businesses. And yet, look at this, guys. Look at all the X's here. They're not ready. They're not, uh, and, and they don't have any clinical measures, uh, quality measures at all. Uh, the only thing they, they compare with us is what? At least 10 years in the cloud. Exactly. Yeah. Too bad they haven't kept up with technology. Right. Here's another one. Uh, this is the free EMR system out there. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about that because there are, uh, this is one of the few that are out there really that, that claim to be free. What that means is the doctor can use it, but while he's using it, he's seeing little ads pop up for different things. And Eric, that has some serious uh, ethical problems because the doctor, if he's influenced by those ads to prescribe a certain medication for a patient, for example, uh, that's, uh, that, that breaks all kinds of rules and regulations. So a lot of doctors are staying away from any kind of free uh, because of that. Now, if you pay, the ads can go away, but right. now it's not free, right? It's, right. it's like any others. Look at it compared to us. Look, there's only 13 clinical quality measures that they qualified for compared to our 64. And a lot and, of other and things. These missing. are just the very minimums on these clinical quality measures that that are out there that are set by the Medicare uh, Center of Medicare and Medicaid Services. Right. Uh, we exceed in, in a lot of what you're seeing here. And again, here's Practice Fusion. They weren't ready for ICD-10, uh, and but yet Practice Fusion is heavily used out there in the marketplace. Yeah. How about this one? Um, some people may have heard of eClinical Works. Oh, that is a probably big. It, it, the this is probably one of the bigger ones that I can, yeah. I can probably And about. the most expensive, Eric. Uh, there's right. doctors who've put in uh, $30,000, dollars $50,000 in eClinical Works because they have to have all kinds of uh, systems compared uh, in, in their office tied together in a network. And 
it's a very complicated system. It's not just uh, pure web-based like ours is. Right. Uh, McKesson. Talk yeah. about McKesson, Patrick. McKesson's been around for years. That, that was one of the clearing houses that uh, Linda and I used to use way back in the black and white days. And uh, uh, they, they've been around a long time. But look, they haven't kept up either, guys. Uh, you know what's amazing to me, Eric, is that most companies that are out there that are well-known, that doctors have heard of, don't come anywhere close to ours. So that's good for our licensees in a way because we are the hidden secret system that's out there that doctors are looking for. And when we show them the demo for you, uh, our, our people actually show the demo to the doctor, they're blown away. Yeah. It's, a no, it's a no brainer. The question yeah. that you need to be ready for at the end of the demo is from the doctor, how, how do I get started? Where do I sign? Exactly. And, and the, these are the ones that we're competing against. And a lot of people ask Patrick, uh, well, how am I going to get that doctor to switch from their EMR system over to our EMR system? Folks, again, it all has to be, it, ha it has to do with the money. And right. even though that they've spent a lot of money on these systems, I'm talking about the money going forward. Because remember, we're 100% integrated, whereas these you have to plug in with another billing system and that third-party clearinghouse. So let's don't forget about what we've already shown you so far. How about all scripts? That one's been around and they even had some big issues because they tried to switch over to another name and boy, it got yes. really Yes, bad. they had a system out there for uh, what, three or four years. All yeah. these doctors got up to speed on it, spent thousands of dollars doing that. And then all of a sudden they come along and say, you know what, we're, 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 we're ending that and we're switching over to something new. And the doctors were just, some of them sued. Yeah, yeah, it was a big deal. Big, big problems there. Here's another one called NextGen. Now, some of these you may or may not know, but we do want to at least show as many as we can uh, show you, again, within the hour that we have. And, again, compared to some, some of the biggest critical issues of, you know, functionality and, and how long they've been in the cloud and does it assist the doctor with charting diagnosis codes. I mean, again, some of these are not. Patrick, you know, a lot of people are using Cario. There, there's Cario. another one out there. Sure. And guys, even though some of this may not make a whole lot of sense to some of you on the <laughs> webinar, we are trying to be as open as we can as a company and share with you what we've done research-wise to help you in your due diligence. Because we know you're searching and we know you're typing things in and trying to figure all this out. We want to reassure you that when you choose ABS as the company that can train you and support you in medical billing as a business, that we do have the best system that's out there because that's important to you. Uh, part of your success is related to the system and how technologically advanced it is. So that's yeah. the only reason we're showing you all this. Epic is another one that a lot of people have heard of that's, uh, look, all X's except for the first thing there, and they've only got uh, you know, 38 of the clinical measures. Uh, here's CareCloud. It's another cloud-based system, as you can see. But again, 27 of those measures and just one thing that uh, matches ours. Care360 is, a, is, a, is another kind of familiar one. But we're going to kind of end with this one because Athena Health is probably in between, I'd say, eClinical Works and Athena Health and maybe McKesson. Those are probably, we could yeah. say, the top three, I agree. Uh, yeah. top five. And as you can uh, see, uh, some of these are uh, certified by Drummond Group. Some of them are certified uh, by CCHIT. It's another organization. Uh, these are equal. Uh, the government accepts the certification from either one of these. And then SureStrips, of course, is the company that actually manages all the e-prescriptions for doctors. So there you go. So, That's, uh, but Athena yeah. at least has three check marks. <laughs> uh, yeah. and, and they're meeting the same clinical quality measures that we we are already it's the only one so, that uh, that does yeah but if so, we were to go back through and and did a cost comparison on these patrick i think folks people would see how much more a lot of these other systems actually are costing the doctor now remember patrick said earlier about the cost back a lot of people ask us well how much is it gonna how much is it for me to run emrx and i claim and all of this uh Folks, again, that's the doctor's expense to, to do business for them. But and they've even, already paid for these other systems, aren't they, Patrick? Yeah, and, and, and we didn't really come up with a chart to, to show the comparison in prices, but we do have another chart that lists a, a whole lot of systems, and ours is at the very bottom, meaning we are the least expensive that's out there. So 
in addition to being the leading edge, the top of the charts on all the features, we're at the bottom when it comes to cost. Now, how do we do that? Volume. We've got a yes. lot of licensees out there. We've got a lot of doctors who are using our system. That that helps to get that cost down and keep it down. And the more doctors we sign up, of course, the the less that cost becomes. And and actually, that's another um, uh, advantage for our licensees because not only are you able to bring more technology to them, you can actually bring their cost on actually doing and utilizing our EMR. I love what David has to say here about Athena Health. Uh, if you can read that question there, Patrick, actually it's not a question, it's actually a statement. Uh, he Athena says that mandates Athena, that the money goes through them. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, that we don't do that. We, we actually make sure that, the, you know, whenever you as an ABS licensee, when you get through making that, that claim, that that money goes directly uh, to the doctor. Well, Patrick, as we're kind of wrapping up here, again, we've only just really just scratched the surface of showing a little bit about, uh, for the folks, learning about what's making our system um, do the things that it's doing and being the award-winning that it has. So as we kind of wrap this up, let's talk to people about how maybe they can schedule a live demo. Why don't you talk to them about what they what Yeah, they can Yeah, we mentioned that. earlier about uh, uh, us doing demos for you, for your doctors who want to see the system and the technology that you'll be using as the medical biller, right? Well, if you'd like to actually set through a demo yourself and actually see our system live in real time, right over the internet, uh, unlike these screenshots we're using here, you just uh, contact your ABS rep and ask them and we'll set that up. We can schedule that for you. We need about, uh, what, what? how much time, Eric? Uh, 45 uh, minutes? Hour? Yeah. Uh, we certainly want a little bit more time if we can, but you know, but, but to kind of, kind of go through the whole demo, yeah, about 45 minutes to an hour. Eric would like three hours of your time, folks. <laughs> but we're not going to give it to him, right? <laughs> no. Oh, he could, he, listen, he could talk for three hours about this system because the features are just, they, they never end. So anyway, just call us. We're going to give you the phone number here in just a minute, and you can uh, contact us directly about that. Okay. We, we now we're generated, ready for some questions, huh? Absolutely. We've generated some questions here. So let's kind of just start at the top, I guess, if you want to. Uh, and we'll kind of just work our way down. Um, you want to start up there again with, um, well, actually David made a, a, an earlier statement. And I think this was way back when we were talking about uh, the uh, CMS 1500 form. Apparently David's done some billing here. He says it's actually easier now than in 1987 as there was not a standard form in 1987 as there is now. That's right. That came shortly after my wife started, where they started standardizing <laughs> things like they do now. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm going to skip here to uh, uh, the next Keith. one. Keith. Yeah. Why would a doctor trust an outsider to deal with the patient's info? Well, uh, Keith, first of all, uh, we, need, we need to talk about the number of doctors who've already decided to outsource. It's not a matter of you educating doctors as to the advantages uh, they, they trust billing companies because, you see, you're covered under the HIPAA rules and regulations for patient privacy. So anybody like an attorney or an accountant that works for a doctor has to sign a HIPAA security uh, you know, form, which you'll have to do also, meaning I'm not going to post this data out there on Facebook you know, for everybody to read about the patients. Uh, you know, Mr. Jones just had a prostate exam, and so I'm going to post that for the whole world to see. You have to be protective of that. And so doctors already recognize that. Eric, what would you say the percentages that you've done some research on as far as the number of doctors who are, have decided already to outsource? It's, it's a pretty good number, isn't it? Maybe half? Yeah, actually, I went to Wikipedia today and was kind of pulling up some last-minute information. And it said as of this date, it actually had um, at least 30% of doctors still processing on paper bills. Paper super bill. See that that to me is incredible. Uh, being you know the year 2014, uh, doctors started going electronic uh, there in the early 90s, and and yet here it is you know 20 years later and they're still doing it on uh, paper. Some of them, uh, I'm blown away every time I hear a licensee through our support department. They say we just found another doctor that's doing his billing on paper, but it does happen. Now a lot of them have decided to do it electronically, and they do it themselves in their own office with their own staff. But think of the uh, 
the, the, the costs that are involved in that, folks, it can cost a doctor up to $20 to process a claim in their own office when you consider all the overhead costs. You can do that for a small percentage of the amount billed. Let's say it's a $100 claim and you do it for 7%. That's just $7. So you save the doctor a tremendous amount of money. So it really has nothing to do, uh, Keith, about the patient information. The doctors know that you have to have a HIPAA-compliant system. Uh, look that up. Just Google HIPAA, H-I-P-A-A, and you'll see all about uh, the patient uh, you know, pr privacy rules. And that's why I put that screen back up there because it's, you know, it, 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 Keith, to kind of help you understand that, ours is a closed system. So th there's that, that'll that help you translate that to the doctor of the trust factor that you can certainly be able to give them. All right, uh, let's take a couple more here because we are getting up to the top of the hour. Uh, Patrick, why don't you take this one from Sala here? Okay, he says, do, do you ever see a situation where a doctor will outsource their billing, however, asking the biller to use their system and not this system, the acting system. Yes, we do see that, Sala. And there are licensees, many of our licensees, who've said, look, I want this doctor's billing. Uh, I know that I can move him at some point to our system, but I'll go in and start using his system. Look, this is the easiest part of the whole business, folks, is learning how to use a medical billing system. So if a doctor says, I have a different system, they will give you a login. You go in and learn a little bit about that system, and you can start doing the processing through their system if that's what they want. Somewhere down the line, you can show them all the advantages once you've got your foot in the door of switching over to our system. And, and, and even, they, uh, Sala, if, even if the doctor says, yeah, I want you to use iClaim, but Patrick, what if the doctor says, yeah, I want you to process my billing through iClaim, but what if they have their own and they bought into one of those bigger EMR systems and they just can't make that transition yet. What would you suggest a brand new licensee that runs across that? Well, uh, we have ways of getting that data, of course, uh, imported into our system. So if the doctor wants to go that route, we can do that. Now, there is a cost involved in that because, as you can imagine, there's dozens of different systems out there. And to make one talk to the other, you have to uh, map all of those fields of data so that it comes in correctly. Uh, we can instantly get all of the patient data, though, all the demographics instantly into our right. system. And you can start you know, from day one. So what you do is you finalize the other system uh, at some point. You have a cutoff date and you start doing your billing through our system on another date. Right. Uh, a couple of uh, quick little statements here from David and one from Jackie. And what David says again about Athena Health, he says, you know, actually Athena Health takes the money and sends the difference to the doctor. That's, I don't think the doctors would prefer that. I think they would prefer getting all of their money and then let them pay their own bills. Well, and that's why we recommend that patients, uh, licensees always keep it exactly the way it is. The checks come directly to the doctor. Now, there is a way to check and, and uh, make sure and verify that all those payments are in our system through what's called an electronic ERA, uh, electronic remittance advice. So that can all be done electronically uh, to import the payments that are actually made to the doctor. But have the checks go to the doctor. You don't want them going to your bank account. That's not the way it's done. You this bill the doctor basically at the end of the month as a medical biller. Uh, you, right. In our system, it will show, okay, I build a, a million dollars for this doctor and I get... Uh, 6% of that or 5% or whatever. And then this last one from Jackie, she goes, I, I've used the clinical works and it's not user friendly at all. <laughs> I think it, one, hopefully we'll see you on one of our demos up here very shortly. Yeah, Patrick, we hear that all the time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, quickly, you've uh, written some articles as we kind of wrap things up here this afternoon. You've written an article and, and articles that go in the BC Advantage magazine. Um, yes, I'm on their editorial board, and so uh, each issue, I have an article in there, a different article about the medical billing business. This one, for example, on how the Affordable Care Act will help your billing business thrive, uh, I just had published. But I've got several of those articles, and if you'd like any of these articles, just contact your ABS rep, and we can send that to you electronically as a PDF right out of there. It's a This is a print magazine, by the way, but go to billing-coding.com if you want to see uh, and read those online. And then if you haven't been out to our YouTube YouTube channel, go out there and just go to youtube.com forward slash YABS. A lot of people like to follow us on Twitter, so you can follow us at, at, at AB Systems uh, on our Twitter account. 
uh, if you're still looking and you're trying to do all of your due diligence and you want to just see and verify how credible ABS is if you want to, go order the uh, Entrepreneur Startup uh, book. I mean, it's a pretty thick book. I think you can find that on Amazon.com. Yeah. And you can see there that they list books, but also business opportunities. And Patrick, we're one of the business opportunities that they, they actually recommend in their book. Well, there's one other listed there, but as people will find out, uh, they've gone out of business. Eric, I've probably seen a dozen companies that do something similar to what we do go out of business over the last uh, 20 years that we've been in business. Exactly. Yeah. Well, again, you like to close out about talking about the money back guarantee. So I'm going to kind of turn this over to you here. Yeah, folks, we've actually got this in the agreement. You can ask for a copy of that from your ABS rep if you want to see it in writing. But it just basically says it's it, there's no uh, fine print here. It's just at the end of our training week. Uh, for any reason you don't think this business is right, you just tell any of our staff members and they'll arrange for you to full uh, receive a full refund of your license fee. So every penny you've paid to ABS is refunded to you. Now, we can't refund your, uh, your travel costs down here, but, folks, it's a very uh, low... Uh, investment on your part to come down here and set through that training for a week and make sure that it's for real. That, that's the only way you'll know for sure. You can also talk to some of our existing licensees, Eric. They could just contact you or any of the reps uh, right about that. And, exactly. and uh, we'd send them the phone numbers of licensees who are out there actually doing the business, have been through that workshop. Oh.